All right, functions. We did this a little bit last year. Can anyone remember what a function, or how to tell if something's a function? Okay, the real easy way to do it is all the x's must be different. So if you had a function table like this, you could just look at it to see whether it was a function just by looking at the x's only. Travis, you better turn that over. So if as long as all the x's are different, then it is a function. Okay? It doesn't matter if any of the y's are the same. If uh, if they had like this, now it's not a function because two of the x's are the same. Now very rarely, but once in a while, I've seen it where they just do it like this, just to see if you're looking. This one would be a function because all they did is they listed it twice. Two still goes to seven. They go to the same number, so which means they're the same thing. Now they, like I said, you maybe will never see one like that. I think it was an ACT test that had that on there. So make sure that they don't go to the same number. Okay? The actual reason of a function is all the X's have exactly one Y for their answer. So here these two X's have the same Y, so that's why it's a function. Input and output. You started making those in elementary. Remember that? Input output table? It's called a function table now, but okay, the input is the X's. So this is the input. It's what you put in. You put zero in one, two, and three. The output is the y's, what you get out. So input, what you put in for x. Now when I say for x, it's because you get an equation something like this. So whatever number you put in for x is your input, and the y's is the answers. what y equals. So if I put zero in here, y would be one. Two times zero plus one is one. Now eventually, they're not gonna use these words. Later on in the book, and then when you get an algebra two, they don't say input, output, they say domain and range. The domain is the input, which what you need to remember is the x's. The range is the output, which what you gotta remember is the y's. So if you had this function table and they told you to describe the domain, you would just say the domain equals zero, one, two, and three. You just list the x's. If they said descri describe the range, you'd list the y's. You guys remember doing this at all? A little bit? Okay. So, making an input output table, in the book they do it sideways. You can do it sideways if you want, or you can do it to me. I like it better this way, but it doesn't matter. So, make an input output table for this equation using this as your domain. So, that means you're going to put in 0, 1, 2, and 3. So, they tell you what to plug in. So when we put it in, if I put zero in here, zero squared is zero, so y is zero. One squared is one. Two squared is four. Three squared is nine. Okay? So does this represent a function? Yes. 
in the assignment today, it says to explain why we don't need to explain. You just got to put yes or no. Because the answer would be every time. If it's yes, you'd say all the X's are different. If it's no, you'd say there's two X's the same. So we don't need to spend the time writing that down. So here when it says describe the domain and range, you just got to list them. The domain is, you don't have to use the squiggly paragraph or a parentheses, you can just put a round one if you want. Domain is zero, one, two, and three. The range is zero, one, four, and nine. Okay. If it does happen to be like this, I'll just make up Say we had three, five, and three. If you listed the range then, you put zero, three, five, and you don't have to list the three again. You only have to list it once. So if it's in there twice, you don't need to put it in there both times. It's not wrong if you do though. You just don't have to. So, part of the assignment, is just looking at a table and saying if it's a function or not. The other part is you're going to be given an equation and you've got to make an input output table. So again, you can do it up and down or you can do it sideways like this if you want. Now here it tells you to use one, two, three, and four for the X. So those are the numbers you put in. 2 times 1 is 2, take away 1 is 1. 2 times 2 is 4, minus 1 is 3. 2 times 3 is 6, minus 1 is 5. You see the pattern? So what's the next one? 7. Does this represent a function? Yes. All the x's are different. Describe the domain and range. The domain is one, two, three, and four. The range is one, three, five, and seven. Okay. Now this one, use this function. It has a constraint on it. Where zero is less than or equal to X is less than or equal to four. You know what this means right here? Remember, what does the X stand for? What word is the X? Domain. So when you see this, it tells you something about the domain. Yeah, between zero and four. So when you do this one, you start at zero because it's equal to, and you go up to four. So if I plug zero in here, 17 plus 10 times zero is 17. 17 plus 10 times 1 is 27. 17 plus 10 times 2 is 37. See the pattern? 47, 57. So, we're, they want you to graph that. So since it's got to go up to 57, I'll let go by 10s. And then you just plot each point, 0, 17, you just estimate where 17 is, 2, 27, 3, 37, 47, 57, and then you would just draw it like that. Starts here and starts there. Now do you know why you got to put a line in there instead of just those five dots? Since it's between zero and four, what else could it be? It could be decimals. It could be 1.5. It could be 3.7. So when you draw a line in there, that includes every number that you plug in here. 1.5 is 32. So, or 0 0.5 is 22. I mean, 1.5 is 32. 
3.9 would be right up here. Now, if they didn't have this constraint on there and just told you to graph that, do you know what you'd have to do to this graph right here? Huh? Close. That means it doesn't start at zero and end at four, so what do you gotta do to this to show that? Arrow. Put arrows, you gotta put an arrow to show that it keeps going, and an arrow here to show that it keeps going. Okay.